praise God somebody hallelujah 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 it's my joy and privilege to be with you today and to be able to bring you the word of God hallelujah just worship God and give him praise give him glory give him honor give him adoration thank you great God thank you Holy Spirit thank you Redeemer thank you mighty God we worship we exalt you we give you praise oh God we give you praise oh God let go that shadow that will ski that will ski that will ski bless him and give him praise give him praise give him praise give him praise Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Redeemer. We worship you. Welcome aboard, man. It's a bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, great God. We bless you. We adore you. Rakota da da ba sha da da ba zota da da ba shigota ya da da ba shigota. Legondo zota da da ba shigota. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Redeemer. We bless you. We adore you. We magnify you, great God. Hallelujah. Welcome aboard, everyone. God bless you, Christ. God bless you. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Just give him praise and give him glory. Worship his holy name. There is none like our God. He is the faithful king. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Redeemer. Bless him. There is none like him. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Shahaba. Mm. Every soul, Rakoko Sotada Daba Shadada Boskiada, Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Mada Daba Shadada Boskida Daba Yadada Boskiata, Jesus, you are Lord. Yeah. Yes, God. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Spirit. You are Lord. Yeah. Jesus, you are Lord. Bless him and give him praise. Share the video invite your friends. Talk to him. Talk to him. You are Lord. Yeah. Jesus, you are Lord. You're going to prophesy to yourself, you're going to talk to yourself. Bible says, Glorious things have been spoken of thee, daughter of God. Glorious things, glorious things, glorious things. Worship him and give him praise. Seated on the throne. On the throne, bless him and give him praise. Worship him. Mara daba sutaya. Jesus, you are Lord. Oh, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Ma bara daba shando skida daba salaro skiata. Jesus, you are Lord. Mention of your name, demons tremble. You are Lord. Rabba da da ba shanda da boski da da boskiya. Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus, you are. Ma ba da da ba shiduta. Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are. You are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Mada la ba shada la boskiata. Lego do do shada la boskiata. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you are Lord. 
Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord. Rabba da rabba shaga da bo sila da baga do sila da rabba shira da. Yes, God. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus. Yes, great God. Roda da ba shanda da boskila da baskiata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Redeemer. Makata da da ba solta da da ba shigota. Lord, we worship. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, God. We give you praise, God. We give you praise, Holy Spirit. Lekonda shaba da da boskila da boskia. Jesus, you are Lord. Bless him and give him praise. Yes, God. Yes, God. Ask God to speak to you this morning from his word. Ask God to talk to you this morning to sanctify you. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Jesus. Yes, great God. We worship you, God. We reverence you. We adore you. We magnify you. We give you praise. That your name be praise, oh God. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Redeemer. Thank you, Mighty God. Thank you, Mighty God. We bless you. Rabba Baba Baba, we shut that Jesus, you are. Mm-hmm. My God, have mercy, God. We bless you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. 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 Jesus, you are Lord. Mm-hmm. Jesus, you are Lord. I don't know what you're going through. Ask God to speak to you this morning from His Word. Bless His holy name. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. Ask Him to intervene in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost, to empower you with His Spirit, to empower you with His Word. Yes, God. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus. You are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus. Yes, great God. Jesus, you are Lord. Yeah. Jesus, you are Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Redeemer, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, God. We give you praise, Holy Spirit. Talk to him this morning. Give him praise. Give him glory. There is none like our God. There is none like our God. Yako tada da ba shanda da ba uskita da ba uskiata. Riba da da ba shando zota da ba skiata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Savior. We bless you, Redeemer. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Great God. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, you are God. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Redeemer. Yes, Mighty God. Zota da da ba shigonta zita la baradoskia. Lord, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, uh, Lord, because there is none like you. I pray as we go into your word this morning that, Lord, you will speak to the hearts of your people. You will touch us, great God. You would lead us. You would direct us. The grace of God will be upon our lives. Help us, Holy Spirit. May your grace be revealed to us. Cause us to walk with you, God. And wherever we've gone weak, wherever we've gone weak, oh God, that your grace will be able to intervene. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. You're all welcome on board. In Jesus' mighty name, welcome on board. All of you, God bless you. Bye, Elvis. God bless you. Good to see you. God bless you. Juliet, favor all of you. Olivia and all of you. I can't see the names. Manessa and all of you. God bless you. Please make sure you leave a comment so I can always be able to identify you. Amen. Again, this is William Bro, teacher, gospel, heroes, world missions, mandate, restoring the message, redefining the ministry, refocusing the church. It's always a joy and a privilege to stand before you and be able to bring you the word of God. I'm going to share with us today on something I, I would consider important. And I believe that God is going to be talking to us from his word. Father, we thank you because you're faithful. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. I pray, mighty King. That even as I bring your word to your people, that the grace of God would be able to intervene. You would lead us. You would direct us, God. You would cause us to walk in path of righteousness. You would help us, great God, 
that wherever we've gone with, may your grace intervene. We bless you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration, Father. Thank you, precious King. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You're all welcome on board. God bless you. I'll be reading to us today from the book of Psalms. Psalms 90. Psalms 90. I'm going to be reading from verse 10. Psalms 90. I'm going to be reading from verse 10. The length of our days is 70 years or 80 if we are strong. Yet their pride is but labor and sorrow for the quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? Your wrath matches the fear you are due. So teach us, Lord, to number our days that we may present a heart of wisdom. So teach us, Lord, to number our days so we may be able to present a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your loving devotion that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen evil. May your work be shown to your servants and your splendor to your children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish for us the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. You see, one of the things I want us to be, I want us to I want us to know about the Psalms is that the Psalms was not written like any other book. It was revelations that were birthed from a place of devotion. There were revelations that were birthed from a place of desperation. And when I talk of desperation, I'm talking of a longing of the soul, a longing of the spirit for, um, for an intimate walk with God. So when you, whenever you're reading the Psalms, these were not just uh, 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 prophecies or these were not just uh, instructions that were given to, 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 the, to the psalmist. No. Just like the other books, God would give his word to the prophets and they'll write it down. He will show them visions and they'll write it down. Oftentimes the Lord will tell them, write this down. Write this down. It's not just for you. It's for you and for later generations. Write it down. But the Psalms is quite different. These were not instructions that God gave the Psalms to, to, to pin down. These were experiences. These were encounters that the Psalms experienced with the Lord because there was this longing of the soul for a walk with God. There was this longing of the soul for intimacy with God. There was this hunger, this desperation on from the inside for a more intimate walk with God. So the psalmist begins to say, Lord, so teach us to number our days that we may be able to present a heart of wisdom. You see, the psalms was written from a place of devotion. And oftentimes, David and the other psalmists, they will go with, they will go to God with a question. They will go to God with something that has troubled their mind, something they cannot fathom. They'll go to God with something they cannot understand. You said, "Let me go to you. Let me go with us to Psalms seventy-three to show you something." Psalms seventy-three. Psalms seventy-three. Psalms seventy-three. I'm going to read a few verses. Psalms 73, from verse 13. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure. In innocence I have washed my hands. For I am afflicted all day long and punished every morning. If I had said I'll speak this way, then I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it was troublesome to he was it was troublesome in my sight until I entered God's sanctuary. Then I discern their end. Hello, you see, David went before God with a question. There was something that was troubling his heart. There was something that was bothering him. He said, "But why is it that the ungodly 
uh, uh, seek to succeed. What is that? Those who don't fear God seem to excel in life. Why is it that the wicked seem to excel in life? But those that desire to walk uprightly go through lots of challenges, go through trials and, and tough times. So that was a concern in the heart of David. That was a concern. It troubled him. He was looking for an answer. He was looking for an answer. He looked at the society and he realized that those who have chose to walk with the Lord come into all kinds of challenges. You see, there are moments where when you go through certain things, you know you could easily have a shortcut out of that situation. You know that you can easily have a shortcut. But the reason why you seem to be in that challenge is because you don't want to go the wrong direction. You don't want to make the, make the wrong decision. You don't want to go the way of the flesh. So you chose to endure certain things. You, you chose to go to certain challenges. You chose to pick up your cross and follow the master. But you have an alternative. You, you can have, you have a shortcut out of that situation. But you know, if I'm going to take that shortcut, it's not going to glorify the Lord. It's not going to be representative. Of who truly I am in Christ. I am going to take this, short, this shortcut. You see. And, and, and yet your friends. Are giving you all kinds of counsel. Or they tell you. Look listen. God understands. Or oh, listen. Every other person does the same thing. It's not a strange thing. Everyone will do the same. But you know from the depths of your heart. Your spirit is bearing you witness. This is not you. You see. When, when Jesus prayed in John 17. He told the father, though they are in the world, they are not of the world. They are not of the world. Your spirit is bearing you witness. No, this lifestyle, this engagement, this thing, I ought not to be part of this. And because you've made your decision, you've made up your mind. You're not going to go the way of the way of the flesh. You now seem to go through certain challenges, certain tough times. Certain, certain battles but you know those that were with you in the same situation but they compromised their way out of that situation they compromised their way out of that case they had their breath recently out of compromise but somehow because you chose to walk uprightly because you chose to stand strong because you you chose to stand on the word of god and to live by faith you now find yourself in what you're actually going through. And you're wondering God. Your friends are testifying everywhere. Their lives seem to be advancing. Their lives seem to be progressing. It seems to be progressing. And you're, you, and you're being bothered. You're being troubled. Lord. What have I gotten myself into? And moments will come. That even the tempter will come to you with all kinds of suggestions. Bible says, and Jesus was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And there in the wilderness, he spent time praying and fasting for the days and for the nights. And the Bible says, after what he was hungry, when he was hungry, then the tempter realized this is a favorable season to approach him. He has eaten for, for, for 40 days and 40 nights. This is the most favorable time. Especially now that he is hungry. The tender saw it as an opportunity to get him at that moment. And he approached him. Now the question which the tempter presented to Christ was this. If you be the son of God, command that these loaves become, command that these stones become loaves of bread. If you be. Now Jesus just spent 40 days and 40 nights in the place of, of prayer. Fasting before the Lord. Spending time with God. And now he has found himself in a certain situation where he is hungry. Where he's hungry is a very sensitive moment. It's a very crucial time. His flesh is demanding food. And the tempter saw it as an opportunity and to, to approach him and to tempt him. And the very first thing he's being questioned on is about his faith. It's about his faith. Oh, I've seen you for 40 days and 40 nights calling on God. But if God was listening, why are you experiencing what you're not experiencing? 
Why are you going through right now what, what you're not going through? You, you've been praying. We, we've seen you go to church. We've seen you giving pay tithes and offerings. We've seen you sing in the choir. We've seen you so devoted. We've seen you try to walk upright. We've seen you stand on the stand on faith. Why others were compromising, you chose not to compromise. Why others were taking the shortcut out of the situation, you chose not to take the shortcut. Why? Because you 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 were you were trying to stand on the word of God. But but if God had been listening, why do you now find yourself in this situation, child of God? There are certain situations we'll experience which are very sensitive, very delicate. And we're going through those situations because God has a plan. And the enemy takes advantage of those situations to bring you to a place where he begins to question your faith in God. He begins to question your devotion to God. He begins to question your loyalty to God. He begins to question all oh, all along, you've been a wonderful wife, glorious wife. You've been obedient to your husband. You've been submissive. But then why are you going through what you're not going through? Don't you think? Oh, I know you were trying to be you were trying to be submissive because that was what the scripture says. But it seemed like the man took advantage over your submissiveness to treat you poorly. Do you think it was right to be submissive? Child of God, you will come to a place in life where you will be questioned on the values you have stood on. You will come to a point in life where you will be questioned on the values you're standing on. The enemy will make you feel that problem with you are the values you're standing on. The tempter will make you feel, life will make you to think that the reason why I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing is because I chose to stand on those values. Bible says they that desire to walk uprightly, to walk in godliness, they will go through persecution. They will go through challenges. So I'm preparing your mind that you may be able to know every single time you're standing on the values of God, the adversary is by your doorstep. The enemy, the tempter is close by. Every time your mind is made up, I'm going to be a better a better wife, a better mother, a better father. Every time your mind is made up, I'm going to experience a change in my life. I'm going to be able to put things in order. Realize one thing, that every single time you make such decisions, the tempter comes much more closer. What do you do in moments like that? How many people have found themselves in certain situations and they tell themselves, enough is enough. I'll no longer be this kind. I'll no longer be this gentle. They came to a place and feel like, oh, I am now suffering because of my kindness. Because of my kindness. Oh, I remember some years ago, being in the university in, in, in Africa. I had a friend who were living together. He was also a preacher. And we, we, we went on vacation. And when we came back on vacation, he came first from vacation before me. Now, by the time I came, I met him in, in, in our apartment with another boy. And he told me, when he brought, this guy just got saved. He didn't have a place to live in. And so I brought him in. He loves the Lord so much. He loves Christ so much. He is so wonderful. We need to help him. And I looked at my friend. I said, no. This guy you're talking about is not real. This guy you're talking about is not genuine. He said, no, when he brought, what do you mean? I guess you simply don't want him to live with us. I said, no, that is not the problem. This guy is not real. My friend said, no, William, bro, this guy just got saved. He's born again. He loves the Lord. And the guy was doing as though spirits were, 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 come, were coming to attack him. My friend told me he was delivered from the kingdom of darkness. So he wants to have a close watch over his life. Because at times, some of those spirits appear to trouble him. So every now and then, the, boy, the, the guy was just like, Oh, he, he, he starts screaming. Here are they, here are they, here are they. My friend will get into prayer. As my friend will get into prayer. I said, look, my friend, you're praying nothing. This guy is not real. 
My friend would not want to believe me. But why was I saying that he wasn't real? Because the very, the very first time I walked into the apartment, I walked into a vision. And the Lord opened my eyes and showed me his life. In, in, in a split second. And the vision was over. You see, child, look, listen to me. It's so important to have eyes that see. It's so important to have ears that hear. It's so important. So even no matter what I told my friend, he will not listen. So every single day, that guy will, oh, oh, oh my God, oh, they're happy again. He was, he, he was seemingly very obedient in the house. He would try to do things, try to do chores, try to do this. Oh, and my friend would be like, oh my God, this guy is wonderful. He's God sent. I was laughing. I said, look, I said, look, listen, <laughs> this guy is not real. One week afterward, when my friend and myself had gone to school on coming back, this guy already knew everywhere my friend kept money. Everywhere. I'm telling you. By the time we came back from school one day, this guy had swept everything and ran away. My friend, everything. He didn't touch my own things. Because I, I mean, I knew him from the very start. From the vision I saw. So I became more careful with myself. I became more careful with the way I keep things. Hello? But my friend was just open. He was trying to be kind. He was trying to be loving. And this guy swept every money he had. Then he ran away. So when we came back and we were looking for him, we didn't see him. My friend began looking for his things and his money. He didn't see nothing. That was when he raised an alarm in the neighborhood. And, and the very next, next door neighbors, people began saying, Oh, since you guys are preachers, because we know this guy. He's, he's, he's a dealer. He goes everywhere. He deals people. We know him. We thought you guys knew him. Everybody knows this guy. But because you guys are pastors, because you guys are preachers, when you, when you told us he's gotten saved, he's born again, we said, oh, okay. We were just watching. We were just watching. We know him so well. Then my friend turned and looked at me. I said, well, he brought you had told me this thing. Why did I not listen? You had told me this thing. Oh God, what bad, what evil did I do? Oh God, ever since when is kindness evil? Why was I repaid evil for evil? Should I still be kind again someday? Or should I see every other person as a suspect? No, I'm not saying see people like suspects, no. But I'm saying, whoever you deal with, let the Holy Spirit be able to communicate who you're talking to, who you're dealing with. You see, people have found themselves in such situations that their minds are made up. Enough is enough. I'll no more be kind. I'll no more be welcoming. It's true, Bible says, entertain strangers. For many have entertained angels without knowing. But because of certain things people have gone through, they have now come to a point that say, look, listen, I don't want to entertain a stranger. Child, I go look, listen to me. Your defense mechanism, mechanism is not going to be, it's not supposed to be contrary to scripture. Because, because we, we have come to a place, and this is precisely what Paul the Apostle meant when he said in 2 Timothy 4, 6 and 7, I have fought the good fight. I have won the race. I have kept the faith. What does that mean to keep the faith? It means I have, you know, irrespective of the challenges I've gone through, I have not let down the values of God. Irrespective of the tough times I've experienced. Irrespective of the persecutions I've experienced. Irrespective of the hate I have experienced. Never single day in my, never, never once in my life did I hate anybody. I kept on portraying love. I have kept the faith. Irrespective of what I've gone through, never once have I been, 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 been rude to people. I have kept the faith. Even when I've gone through trials and challenges and tough times, 
I still make sure my words were seasoned with salt. I still mention my actions were becoming of a Christian. You see, John the Baptist in preaching in Matthew chapter 3, Bible says, and many people were coming for his baptism. So many people. Then he looked for and saw the Pharisees coming also for the baptism. He looked at them and said, Brood of vipers, who has bewitched you? Who has won thee to flee the wrath to come? Bring forth fruit befitting repentance. Brood of vipers, who has won thee to flee to escape the wrath to come? You gotta bring forth fruit befitting repentance. Hello? John was saying, look, listen, your fruit needs to prove your repentance. Paul said, I kept the faith. I fought the fight. I kept the faith. It's, it's quite challenging. He said, most people haven't really understood that scripture. So, so the thing is, I mean, how do you keep the faith? Haven't fought the fight. So many people have become bitter towards others. So many people have become unforgiving towards others. Oh, he broke my heart. May God punish him, not him alone. Punish his sisters. Punish their children to the fifth, seventh generation. Sister, you, you, you have just been overcome by evil. You haven't kept the faith. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. You, you don't understand. I've spent a, I've, I've spent a fortune on this guy. I've, I've spent a fortune on him. Pastor, you don't understand. He broke my heart. May God punish him in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, at midnight. May God, may his sisters be barren. May his children be barren. May God cripple them on their legs, cripple them in, in their hands, cripple them everywhere. Pastor, no, not this one. Not this one. Hello? You've been overcome by evil. Oh, you did good. You showed kindness. You were sincere. But you were played upon. In moments like that, can you still afford to keep the faith can you still afford to maintain the faith no doubt many people in such situations they will get into prayer and all they are saying is let him die by fire let him die by thunder let him die why why the pastor is saying let all your enemies come down in their mind they know who that enemy is hello have you kept the faith what do you do in moments like that? What do you do in, in situations like that? What do you do? Paul said, I fought the good fight. I've won the race. I've kept the faith. I didn't allow myself to be overshadowed, to be overpowered by wickedness. You see, there are moments in life that doing good seems foolish. There are moments in life, standing on the scriptures, it appears to be foolish. It appears to be weakness. It appears to be stupidity. It appears to be insanity. There are moments in life, people will mock at you. Ah, look at this one. No, even God is not stupid. Even God is not a coward. What do you do in moments like that? When people begin to question the very values you stand on. What do you do? What do you do? Bible says the foundations of the Lord's standard show, having this inscription, the Lord knoweth those who are his. The foundation of the Lord standard show. Having this inscription, the Lord knoweth those who are his. And everyone who is called by the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity. The foundation of God stand at show. Child of God, when you're going through oppression, you're going through situations, you're going through persecution, I want you to always remind yourself of this. The foundation of the Lord stand at show. Having this inscription, 
the Lord knoweth those who are his. The Lord knoweth. And anyone who is called by the name of the Lord. Hear me? There are moments in life doing the wrong thing seem to be the comfortable thing to do. There are moments in life acting the wrong way is the most convenient way to act. There are moments in life being a little wicked to someone who's dealt, who was dealt, who's treated you poorly is the most comfortable, is the most convenient way to act. When you find yourself in such situations, what do you do? Hello? How do you know a good orange? It doesn't matter how much you squeeze it. All that will come out will be juicy. It doesn't matter how much pressure you put on it. It doesn't squeeze the orange with wickedness. Squeeze it like you want you like you want to crush it completely. No matter the amount of pressure you exert on that on that orange, all that comes out of it is juicy. It's juicy. It will never, no matter how wicked you squeeze it, it will never release something evil. Child of God, what do you do in most moments like that? David was troubled. David was concerned. It seemed like the wicked are succeeding. It seemed like those who actually compromise, they are the ones having the breakthrough. It, it, it seemed like that. I was talking to a little some time ago. She's in Africa. And she told the pastor, I got a great job. I got a wonderful job. And 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 at a very high position. In one of the tele the, the telecommunication companies in Cameroon. The, in, I won't call the name. In one of the telecommunication companies in Cameroon. She's a lady. Wonderful job. Those kind of jobs you can't get until you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. You, you can't get those jobs. Those kind of jobs, your certificates from the university won't give it to you. You gotta know somebody. Who knows somebody? Who is seated in high places? But out of the blue, Thousands of people applied out of nowhere. A lady without any background, a lady without any special status was chosen. She was elevated. Then they said, oh, look, listen, we're going to have a board meeting. And you're, and you're a member of board. Oh, my gosh. She said, Pastor, you don't understand what I'm being paid. My former salary. Is my former salary is one tenth of what this new job is offering me. My life has changed. So when she went for the board meeting, here was just a few people. They were chatting and discussing, and they were all ladies. And they said, uh, "We we called you to 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 introduce you to a club. We are a club of lesbians." Every one of us to be able to maintain your position. Make the other lady happy all the times. And she was shocked. To be able to maintain your position. This is a secret. Nobody's supposed to know this. What do you do in moments like that when you seem to have received breakthrough but those breakthroughs would, would, would entail you or would need you to let go certain values? What do you do? What do you do? Child of God, there is one thing I want us to be able to understand. Values 
have no monetary value. They have eternal value. Values have no monetary value. You can stand on values and be the most broke person in this world, but not in the next world to come. Values have no market value at times, especially based on the environment you're dealing with. Because in other environments in this world, values is what will promote you. But even when it seems to demote you because you're standing on values, child of God, listen to me, it has an eternal reward. Bible says, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great which, which, ha which has a great recompense of reward. Don't throw off your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward. But after you've stood firm till the end, hello, you'll be crowned. Do not throw off your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward. And she sat amongst them. And she was shocked. And she said, I'll let go of the job a thousand times than to compromise my values. I let go. And the mock at her. The laugh at her. And she look at this one. So many people are desiring this position. She told them you, you can give it to them. I ain't going to compromise on this issue. And she got up and she walked away. What do you do in moments like that? What do you do in moments like that? What do you do? When you've now had a pregnancy, you were not ready for. And the day the baby stepped in, the man said, no, it's not my child. The day the baby ste stepped in, the day the pregnancy stepped in, You lost your job. What do you do? Now, going to school is challenging. What do you do? When your friends will tell you, I know somebody. It's less than five minutes. It's all out. So you're standing at a place where you risk losing your job. You risk losing your education. You, you, you're about getting into a, a period of, 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 of stagnation because of this pregnancy. You risk losing your family. Or subscribe to the advice of your friend. And within five minutes, this is all gone. And you can go back to live your life. What do you do in those moments? What do you do? The foundation of the Lord's standard show, having this seal, having this inscription, the Lord knoweth those who are his. They that are called by the name of the Lord. They that are called. I've seen pastors that their teenage daughter gets pregnant and quietly they take up abortion. Quietly. No. We can allow her to have the baby. We are a priestly family. What will be said about us? No. I'm the bishop. I'm the pastor. My wife. You know where to take her to. Quietly. I've said things like that. What is the reputation you're trying to keep and preserve when the values? What is the reputation you're trying to keep at the expense of letting down the values? What do you do in moments like that? It seems like, oh, getting the, the, the baby out, I bought the baby out, is the easiest way. It will protect the family legacy. It will protect the name of the family. 
the priestly family. It will present the, the, the children of the bishop as wonderful, as loyal, as, as faithful. Hello. Aborting the baby seemed to be the easiest way out. Seemed to be the most convenient way out. Seemed to be the most logical way out. Keeping a child comes with lots of challenges. What do you do? David says, and these things worried me. Because the wicked will, it will quickly take the baby out. And press on with their future. But the righteous will say, will say oh no God. Getting the baby out is, is destroying a life. I'll do everything to preserve this life. And because her mind is, I'll do everything to preserve this life. She goes through a season of pain. She goes through a season of rejection. She goes through a season of challenges. Her wall is like falling dead, upside down. Her plans are like falling upside down. Her dreams, her visions are like falling upside down. What am I getting into? What season am I walking into? What season? Because I chose to stand on that which was right. It bothered the heart of David. Then David said in Psalm 73 verse 17, These things troubled my spirit. Then I went to God in the place of prayer. Then I went to the sanctuary of the Most High. And David said, Until I entered the sanctuary of the Most High God, then I understood the end of the wicked. Then I understood that those who could easily compromise and have their way out, then I understood what has been reserved for them on the other side of the tunnel. Child of God, hear me. Standing on righteousness may seem difficult. Standing on values may seem difficult. But hear me. It has a great recompense of the word. On the other side of the tunnel. It has a great recompense of the word. On the other side of the tunnel. Then, ah, then I understood their end. Then I understood. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the total duty of mankind. 14. For God will bring everything into judgment. Be it good or be it evil. Psalms 1 tells us, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is a man that standeth not on the path of the sinners. Blessed is a man that sinneth not on the sin of the scornful, chapter two, verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law, he meditates day and night. Verse 3, he shall be like a, like a plant, planted by the rivers of water. Its leaves do not wither. It bringeth forth its fruit in its season. In whatsoever he doeth, he prospereth. Verse 4, but the ungodly are not like that. They are like the chaffs which the wind bloweth away. For the ungodly, verse 5, will not stand in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the path of the righteous, verse 6, but the path of the ungodly shall perish. David says, until I entered into the presence, the sanctuary of God, then I understood the end of the wicked. Until I, I got into the sanctuary of the Most High God. 
until I got into the sanctuary of the Most High God. Then I understood the end of the wicked. Until I got into the sanctuary of the Most High God. Then I understood the end of the wicked. Child of God. Until I got into the sanctuary of the Most High God. Then I understood. A day is coming. A day is coming. A day is coming. That we will stand before the judgment seat of the Lord. That day is coming. Are you hearing me? So the psalmist went to God in the place of prayer. And he was troubled and worried. And concerned. And began praying and began worshipping the Lord. The Lord began instructing his spirit. And he brought to us as the, in the service. Child of God, hear me? Hear me? God is calling us into a more intimate walk with him. So teach us to number our days that we may present the heart of wisdom. Return, O oh God. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your devotion. The son says, Lord, satisfy me every morning with your devotion. What he's talking about is, oh God, I want to be able to experience the beauty of fellowshipping with you every single day. That was exactly what Christ meant when he said, man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. The tempter will always come to question your identity. As he came to question Christ's identity. If you are the son of God. Command that these stones become loaves of bread. At a time he was hungry. He could be very very susceptible at that time. But he told himself. Look listen. I'm going to stand on the values of God. Man must not live by bread alone. He said. But by every word that proceeds. From the mouth of the father. The psalmist says, oh God, satisfy us every morning with your loving devotion. Satisfy us every morning. Child of God, when you spend time with God, it brings a fulfillment. 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 fulfillment. It does. God is calling us into a place of intimacy. Into a place of intimacy. Into a place of intimacy. God is calling us into a place of oneness with him. Into a place of intimacy. A place of intimacy. Where he can begin to satisfy us. Where you can come out of the place of prayer. And you feel like, oh my God, my soul, my spirit. Has been refreshed. Will you come out from a place of devotion, and you feel like your your spirit has been refreshed? Precious name, oh how sweet! Hope of earth and joy of heaven. And draw, worship God. Precious name, worship me, give him praise. Give him praise. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth. And joy of heaven. Talk to God, talk to God. Precious name, oh, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. La kota baya, zon tadaraba shigota paradishia. Oh how sweet hope of earth and joy 
of heaven. If you're watching me and you're not born again, I want to encourage you to give your life to the Lord as you pray with me this prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Save my soul. Redeem my life. That I'll not be the same again, Lord. I bless you, Holy Spirit. I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you adoration. In the name of Yeshua. Just pray to God and ask God to take charge over your life. Lord, I pray for your people, Holy Spirit. That the grace of God will be upon your lives. You would help us, great God. You would intervene in the lives. You would take total charge. Lead, O God, and direct your people. And cause us to walk with you. Every single day of our lives. We bless you, God. We bless you, Holy Spirit. We bless you, Redeemer. That your grace be lavished on our lives. We worship you, great God. We worship you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, great God, and sanctify us. In the name of Jesus. Just bless God and give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Give him praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, great God. 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 Just bless him. Just appreciate him. Just give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Him alone is worthy. Him alone is faithful. Him alone is glorious. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. May the grace of God be with you mightily. And you will not be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Again, this is Willie Brought Teacher. Gospel Heroes World Missions. Mandate restoring the message. Redefining the ministry. Refocusing the church. It's always a joy to be with you. And welcome to our Gospel Heroes International School of Ministry. Every Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. Central Time, live on Facebook. Where God is building expert builders. Where God is raising expert builders. I love you all. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube, our YouTube channel. We will be updating videos. May the grace of God be with you. And please always share the videos also. Your life will not be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ. I love you all and stay blessed. Happy Monday. May the grace of God be with you. Thank you, Manessa, for putting putting the link on the, of the channel, Gospel Heroes TV, on the screen. God bless you all. Good to see you. Patience. Good to see you, Olivia, Spora, Miss Lundy. God bless you. God bless you, Manessa, and every single one of you. I can't see all the names. But may the grace of God be with you mightily. In the name of Yeshua. God bless you, Quinta. Good to see you. Barry, God bless you. Good to see you. Hallelujah. I can see all the names. Amen. May the grace of God be with you mightily. And have a great day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, 7 a.m. Central Time. It will be awesome. Come tomorrow, prepare to fast. Amen. Bye-bye.